Christmas is coming, and so are Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party and Jollywood Nights. Disney released all kinds of information about these two holiday events. More changes are coming to Genie Plus and the Fantasmic Dining Packages. Plus more resort discounts and DVC incentives on episode 200 of the Mickey File Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to episode 200 of the Mickey File Podcast. That snuck up on me. It did. I mean, it's like monumental, baby. I don't know about that, but for us, it's like monumental. The last three weeks. Like, I knew it was coming, and then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, crap, this is 200. I know. And all we're going to talk about is news. <laughs> I know. It's just, it, so, yeah. Yeah, it's it, super cool. It is super cool. We actually made it 200. Yeah. So we're done. <laughs> we're not done. <laughs> we're just getting up that. We hit one hill. Now we got other hills to hit. Right. Right. Sure. Anyway, a uh, lot going on at Disney. Yes. So they've, um, I don't know, decided they had to change Shady Plus. <laughs> yes. But. Now I wonder. Yeah. Is it coincidental that they just changed DAS so nobody can use it? Just wondering. Well, Here's I know tinfoil hatness. Yeah, and I know that they had said that there are going to be changes coming with Genie Plus. They did say that. Well, they said that a while ago. Right. They were going to simplify it. Yeah. <laughs> By now having, yeah, tears. Yeah, everything. Tears else. and and anyway. yeah. So we'll get into it. Yeah. Cool stuff. Mm-hmm. They uh. Well, they didn't actually hit the mark with halfway to the holidays either. No. Because when they announced halfway to the holidays. Well, it would have been halfway to Christmas Eve. Halfway to Christmas Eve. Right. Now, prior to this year, halfway to Halloween and halfway to the holidays was halfway to basically the first party. Right. They did not hit that with either one this year. No. Closer to that than they are any kind of appropriate due date for a corn dog stand. Well, and they took all of the shrubbery away and then put it back up. Apparently, they've put it back up. So I hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's a freaking concession stand. Like, I don't even care. It's the principle. It's just the idea that this is taking so long. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand it. Right. It is an eyesore on the boardwalk. It is. For people spending a lot of money a night for rooms. Yes. But anyway, still no corn dogs. Nope. I still think we just take our air fryer. We'll go to Win dixie We're going Tuesday, right? Which is tomorrow. So we just, well, yeah, but not when this comes out. True. We'll already be there. But I think air fryer and run by Win dixie and get a box of Nathan's corn dogs and we'll just set up stand. What, are they going to say no? You know what would be awesome? If we got a boardwalk view room, right? First floor with the porch because yeah. it doesn't have a balcony. Right. And just sell them from the room. <laughs> so anyway, enough about corn dogs for this week. Unbelievable, though. I know. All right. So it is coming to be Christmas. It apparently. is. Apparently. We haven't gotten to the first Halloween party, but let's talk Christmas. <laughs> We're still like six weeks from the Halloween party starting. I know. I know. Halfway to the holidays. It is. Whenever it was, they announced it. Wednesday, I think. I believe it was last. 24th, right? Whatever it was. That would have been Tuesday, I believe. Okay. We've got 
So we know Mickey's very merry Christmas party dates. Yep. Jollywood nights dates. Which, yeah, I'm excited. And more. And more. But wait, there's more. All right. Talk to me about Mickey's very merry. All right. Well, they have 25 nights starting November 8th through December 20th. The hours are from 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. But then you always get in early with your ticket. Um. Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade. It'll, it will include Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade, Minnie's Wonderful Christmas Time Fireworks Show, Mickey's Most Merriest Celebration Castle Stage Show are all returning. But the dream lights are not returning. No. They're gone forever. Uh, yeah. Like I saw all kinds of websites and YouTube channels and what have you that were. Can't believe the dream lights are gone. The dream lights are gone. Like mm. they're doing projections now. They're not going to do them on top of icicle lights. So, right. The dream lights are gone. That is correct. Kind of bummed about that. But to be honest with you, I thought the castle looked better with them. And I thought the whole thing of having Elsa come out and light it was a cool deal. Mm -hmm. Leave the projections on Tower of Terror. That works fine. Yes. But I don't know. I mean, it was cool during COVID. Right. During the great unpleasantness, because at least it was something, mm -hmm. you know, but bring the lights back, like for I, real. I know, because it really made it just no matter where you were in the park, you could see it. And it literally just made it seem Christmas magic. Yeah, I, I have. Well, I mean, like the screensaver on our TVs is that castle with the lights. Yeah. It was just super cool. It was just really cool. And having her light it was just, it was kind of just made your heart go, huh? Okay, it made my heart go, huh? Yeah, I understand why they went to projections during the great unpleasantness. Right. Because, I mean, for one thing, they were still putting stuff up on the castle, so... Because of the 50th. So you could do that. Right. But anyway. But all the 50th stuff's gone. Right. So I I don't get it. Yeah. 50th stuff's gone. The 100th really never came. Yeah, so it really didn't. A few signs around. Yeah. Oh, there merchandise. Go. God forbid they don't have merchandise. But. <laughs> Not as much as the 50th though. Merchandise. No. They did us a few cool things, so. They had very cool stuff, mm -hmm. but it's all gone. Yeah. Jollywood Nights is returning. It ha it's for 13 nights starting November 9th through December 21st, and it will take place from 7.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. Um, on Hollywood Boulevard, there's going to be a new dazzling skating spectacular set to your favorite holiday tunes. Um, it's going to happen several times each evening. And it says, take in the grace and skill of international champion skaters in an awe-inspiring twist on the traditional ice show. I'm interested to see what that, how they're doing that. It has to be in the area in front of the theater, obviously. Yeah. My question is, are you really only going to set that whole thing up and then only do it 13 nights? Actually, you know what? Hmm. So this is another thing when I, that I heard about, okay. right, on social media and YouTube and all that. Right. I would like to see them incorporate Galaxy's Edge. Yes. But. Not that Galaxy's Edge wasn't open. It just was like this black hole of not Christmas in the middle of Hollywood Studios during the party. Right. Um, I also heard a lot of kind of joking about the ice skaters. You know what? This doesn't say ice skating. No, it says skating. I think it's going to be in line. You know, a twist on the traditional ice show, which could mean... Um, you know, not on ice. Right. In which case, now you just kind of put them on the stage. Yeah, or, and yeah. 
do it, right? Like, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's not a stage still there that was portable. Right. That was, yeah, that was a temporary. So, you know, you might have to set up a stage for this to happen. Mm -hmm. But the ice skating show at Bush Gardens is not on a very big stage. No, not at all. It's so I feel like um, that portable stage that they used, used to use for the um, first order thing. Yeah. Is like almost big enough, mm -hmm. you know, depending on. I mean, that was when they had like 10 skaters at Bush Gardens on the ice. There's no saying that they even have 10 people come out at a time and do stuff. Right. So maybe that's how they do it. Yeah. I'm actually really excited about this. Yeah, because I, think it'll I be don't neat. see anything here that says that it actually is ice skating. No, it's just a twist on traditional ice show. Otherwise, that's a very permanent fixture. Yes. Outside. Right. To only use it 13 nights. Yes. You know? Like an hour total, 13 times. Mm hmm. So oh. I'm looking forward to it. I, I mean, Bush Gardens just did a great job, and we know Disney does better shows than Bush Gardens. Right. Bush Gardens ice skating show was really cool. It was very cool. I'm really and they do an outside one at SeaWorld also. Mm hmm. Additionally, they're going to include over 20 unique character experiences, both new and returning favorites. Um, returning is. What's this? Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas Sing Along, Disney's Disney Holidays in Hollywood, and Jingle Bell Jingle Bam. <laughs> Is the Disney Holidays in Hollywood the thing that was in the Beauty and the Beast Theater? It must be, right? It must be. That was actually an okay show. Mm hmm. It was a little hokey, but at least it had the Muppets. Yeah. I hope they do that again. Although yeah. they seem to, like, hate the Muppets. Yeah, I know. But lately, they've not been hating the Muppets. I don't know. They canceled all their shows. Oh, uh, uh, Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, that was okay. Mm hmm You know, I really could care less about Nightmare Before Christmas. Like, I really never have gotten into it. It's fine. The yeah, movie is yeah. fine. But the show last year was pretty cool. The sing along, the sing along show was awesome, and having that thirteen foot or whatever it is, maybe that's the thing we have out front. That's the one we have. Uh, whatever size that big puppet was was mm -hmm. really cool. Yep, getting to see it up close in that theater and to see how big it actually is, right, rather than on the stage at the castle, right, because it's that one. So yeah. it's really cool. I that like was that. A show. Very cool show. Yeah, definitely seeing. We're definitely seeing that again. And not what I expected. I, we expected it to be frozen with different characters, and it's it's not. Right. So. It was pretty good. I is. enjoyed it. It was very good. Uh-huh. Way better than the Beauty and the Beast sing-along. Oh, yeah. In Epcot. Yeah. The Holiday Fiesta and La Calle will move to the animation courtyard. Well, that's good, I guess. Like, I actually felt like where they had that, there was plenty of room. Yeah, but that animation courtyard was kind of dead because all they were doing was the character meets. Yeah, but it had all the character meets, the photo ops, the thing where you held the gift. Right. I think they're still going to do the picture things. The, um, what was that weird thing? We didn't wait in line for it. No. It looked weird. Yeah. And it was like a third party vendor running it. I can't remember. Oh, the robot camera thing. Yeah. Um, but they're also going to have the three caballeros in there in the courtyard with this. Which okay. I, that'll be kind of cool. Yeah. The Twilight Soiree at the Tip Top Club located at the Tower Courtyard, where you it will have you dancing throughout the night. I really enjoyed that show. The That band. area was like my favorite part of the whole party. Mm-hmm. It was really pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, that area was... Really good. Mm hmm And Jazzy Holidays at the Hollywood Brown Derby will also return. Okay. I actually didn't really hear anything good about that. I didn't either. So I'm hope I'm. So maybe they fixed that. I'm encouraged that they will have improved it. We did not do that because it was kind of expensive and hard to get into. Right. 
and there was already a lot to do. So I don't know. I'm probably going to skip that. There was too much to do. There was a lot to do. Going into a restaurant for a while to hear a jazz band when they probably aren't better than the one playing at Tower of Terror. Yeah, because they are right there. They were fantastic. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. Guests of select Disney Resort hotels, Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphins and Shades of Green, can purchase tickets starting on July 2nd. For all other guests, tickets go on sale July 10th. So basically, anyone listening to this, um, you've already missed your July 2nd. And um, so tickets are on sale now if you have stays during that time. Otherwise, you can get them starting on the 10th. Great. Okay. All right. Here comes the next big thing. Now, I'm going to be honest. I haven't read a lot about this. So you'll get my initial reaction because I really haven't paid attention to this. I've been busy. Plan ahead with the Lightning Lane entry at Walt Disney World starting July 24th. Walt Disney World introduced new, simpler names to provide more clarity for everyone. Disney Genie Plus service will become Lightning Lane Multipass. Lilo Dallas Multipass. Yeah. Multi- Lilo uh, Multipass. You know that's a multipass. Multipass. Got it. Yeah. And then the... The... Individual lightning lane. Right. Will become lightning lane single pass. Okay. Okay. I mean, it sort I mean, of makes I guess sense. That, I guess that single is less. Single is one. So is individual. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to think how... Single is like um, more clear than individual, but yeah. okay. Yeah. So when you purchase Lightning Lane Multipass, can make up to three Lightning Lane selections in the theme park in advance of your visit. You will also be able to choose available times as you make your selections. And they're going to go back to tiers. Yeah. Kind of remember that, but I don't really. What is it? You can only pick one in tier one and then the rest in tier two or whatever it is. Correct. So tier one, ride a top attraction. So Lightning Lane single pass is those not available with Lightning Lane multi-pass. Mm-hmm. So Magic Kingdom, tier one, Big Thunder, Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan, Space Mountain, Tiana. Mm-hmm. Choose your other two experiences or all three from this group. Right. Barnstormer, Buzz Lightyear, Dumbo, Haunted Mansion, Small World, Mad Tea Party, Magic Carpets of Aladdin, Winnie the Pooh, Phil Our Magic, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, Pirates of the Caribbean, Tomorrowland Speedway, and Under the Sea Journey, Journey of the Little Mermaid. Right. Once you redeem a selection, you can choose another multi-pass experience from either group, subject to availability. Single-pass attractions will be Seven Doors, Bind Train, and Tron Light Cycle Run there. Hollywood Studios, Tier 1, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Millennium Falcon, Rock and Roller Coaster, Slinky Dog Dash. So no more standby, or at least no lightning lane for Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Right. Animal Kingdom, Dinosaur, Everest, Feathered Friends in Flight. Oh, they don't have any tier one right. in Animal Kingdom. Gee right. whiz. Wow. How is that? Oh. Because they're going to make you pay if you want to go on Avatar. Right. Because it's an ILL now. Yeah. Epcot tier one is Frozen, Remy, and Soren. You know, I said this a year ago, like 12% joking. Okay. Can we just go back to ticket books and charges for each ride? Because it's clearly what they're trying to do. Yeah. And then Guardians of the Galaxy is the ILL. Now, meet and greet 
um, appear to no longer be part of the new lightning lane feature. Right. But shows that don't really have lines are. I don't know. That's like filler because they were trying to get to a, a decent number of them when they put them on there. Right. So Seven Dwarfs and Tron are still going to be ILLs. Just sell ticket books like you used to. Honestly. How much do Lightning Lane passes cost? Prices vary. That's all we'll tell. That it's not cheaper. And you have to do... Oh, hmm. you can only buy them by the day. After you purchase your lightning lane passes for your first day, you can purchase a lightning lane pass or passes for an other eligible park day. Oh, so you still have to. Looks like it's a lot of transactions. Wow. Well, just go to, just go to ticket books. It'll be so much easier for everybody. Okay, well, it says... I mean, it's what they're doing. Here's the e-ticket rides at Magic Kingdom. You know what I mean? Well, I thought it's seven days out, you can book for your entire stay. But the way it reads is multiple transactions. Like, each day is a transaction. It even says, can I purchase a Lightning Lane multi-pass and Lightning Lane single pass says... For the same day in a single transaction, yes, you can purchase all Lightning Lane passes for your travel party for the same day in a single transaction subject to eligibility. Okay. Making plans for multiple park days after you purchase Lightning Lane passes for your first day, you can purchase a Lightning Lane pass or passes for another eligible day. Right. So if you're there four days, you have four different days of transactions. Yeah. All right. But I'm sure we'll be trying this out. Well, we're going to have to. Yeah. It starts on the 24th. So that's weird. You could start booking them on the 24th. When does it actually start? The 24th. So, so much for your seven days in advance if you're going on the 24th. Because it doesn't go into effect till the 24th. So yeah. they can't let you book it. Can be it. purchased and used starting July 24th, 2024. Mm-hmm. So. If you happen to be going on the 24th, you do not get seven days in advance. Right. Or any days in advance. Right. Currently not a fan. We'll see how it works. Yes. Okay. Fall and holiday resort room promotions have just been announced. You can save up to 30% on rooms Sunday through Thursday nights from October 6th through November 21st. And most nights, November 24th through December 25th. There is a free park hopper benefit when you take advantage of this offer with a room and ticket package that included includes non-discounted four-day or longer date-based theme park tickets with, with park hopper benefits. You can visit multiple parks each day of your ticket. Florida residents... Get up to a 30% discount Sunday through Thursday night stays from October 6th through November 21st and most nights November 24th through December 25th. Annual pass holders get up to a 40% discount most nights December 9th through December 25th if booked by August 28th. Plus up to 35% on Sunday through Thursday nights from October 6th through November 21st, and most nights, November 24th, 4th through December 25th. So everybody gets 30%, and annual pass holders get 40 or 35. Right. Um, Great. Sounds good for... Apparently they're dead between October and Christmas again. Yeah. So, but they, I mean, it's some good, it's good promotions. They are for people. Yeah. I mean, if the rooms were booked, they wouldn't be discounting them though. Right. Which is apparently why they keep changing everything to DVC instead of yeah cash rooms. Yeah. Okay. Eland, Antelope Calf, and Zebra Foal were born at Animal Kingdom Lodge. That's cool. 
Yeah. I think that's really neat. Yeah. So one day they'll be out in the savannah. Yeah. Redesigned Morocco Pavilion Fountain. Redesigned Morocco Pavilion Fountain and Courtyard unveiled at Epcot. Was that not like weeks ago? No. The whole thing, it was still boxed off. Oh, because I've seen all kinds of pictures of the bathroom tile they replaced the cool Moroccan stuff with. It's very generic now. Yes. All right. Fantasmic dining package changes and price increases coming August 29th. Um, here's what's currently included in each Fantasmic dining package. Okay, so it's not that big of changes. Um, almost feels like, well, it's changed because they want to change the price, basically. Um, you don't get a choice anymore of an entree or, or a appetizer or dessert. They're going to give you an entree and a dessert. Okay. Um, or buffet with a non-alcoholic beverage. That's the first thing. Um, then, basically, for adults, 50s prime time, Hollywood and Vine lunch and dinner, Hollywood and Vine breakfast, both of those, Mama Melrose's, and uh, Sci Fi Dine in Theater, and the Hollywood Brown Derby. They all went up six bucks. Yes. That's what they're doing. And you know what? It's a lot of food. Mm -hmm. So who needs the desserts better than the appetizer, I guess. Right. But that's what they changed. So there it is. Yay. Yay. Um, For 21 or older, you do get the alcoholic beverage. Oh, it does say that. Yep. That's cool. Yep. And you get a voucher for guaranteed seating at Fantasmic, which is what makes the whole thing worth it. Yes. And actually, the Hollywood and Vine... Lunch and dinner for 75 bucks for the adult is not bad. No. The food is definitely, it's very good. Yeah. And you don't have to wait in line and you sit in the middle of the theater. Right. So it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm a fan of that. Yes. Um, there's a Dino Land USA intern at Restaurantosaurus. He was originally scheduled through late June, but now he's been extended through mid-September. He offers entertainment, which bridges interactive musical element to Restaurantosaurus and the Restaurantosaurus Lounge at Disney's Animal Kingdom. So from what I saw in the pictures, it's uh, our buddy, uh, the hell was his name? Santo? Sando. Sandro. Sandro. From... Uh, the Galactic Star Cruiser. Is uh, it really? Yeah, doing the same thing. Hey, help me write a song. Cool. Yeah. Um, and we, in fact, have not gone in there, which is dumb. But I think it's kind of like how we saw uh, Lieutenant Croy a couple weeks ago in yeah. um, Hollywood Studios, you know, doing the, the thing at Kylo's Shuttlecraft. It's the same thing. I think these guys were under contract, and so they're using them. Yeah. For till they're out of contract, which is fine because they're still very talented. It was, it was very cool. Yeah, and not their fault that Star they closed it. Yeah, so that's very cool. We need to go by there this week. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, not much news on the Disney Vacation Club incentives. Uh, they're pretty much the same as they have been. They've added some attractive new deals for points at uh, Bay Lake Tower, Saratoga Springs, and Animal Kingdom Villas. Prices for the four newest destinations are largely unchanged, but you are getting an added bonus for Disney Visa card holders. For whatever reason. Okay. So find out about that. Yep. Um, that's it for news. Yeah. I don't think we talked about it the other day, but we watched the uh, drone show from our back porch. At Saratoga Springs. At Saratoga Springs at Congress Park. So we had heard, and it's true, mm -hmm. that you see the backside of it. 
which honestly only matters at the very end of the show when they put up the Disney's dreams that soar words. Right. And they don't pipe the music in, which is true. However, um, nothing stops the music from coming across the lake. We could hear all the music. The talking was kind of muted. Yes. Like, couldn't pick that up very well, but you could hear all the music. Right. So it was a very cool little place to sit and uh, have a glass of wine and watch the drone show for free. Right. And not have to deal with crowds. Yeah. So we were in the 2500 to I think it's 2800 building of yes. Congress Park, which is all the way over on the right. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you get in the middle two buildings. Yes. You would have a great view. Mm-hmm. Like a great view. Yes. And actually, the people who were on the right side, because the buildings are kind of U-shaped, mm-hmm. the people on the right side were sitting out on their balcony, and I bet you they could see it pretty well. Yes. We had a big, we had the corner. We had part of the building and a tree in our way. Right. But saw most of it. Mm-hmm. So that was super cool. And I want to just stay there so we don't have to go all the way to Disney Springs to see it. Right. Cool thing being back there, though, is you see it way more 3D because I think the drones are a lot closer to us. Yeah, they're definitely on the Saratoga side of the lake. Yes. And so you really see the 3D aspect of it. And you hear the drones It because it's just, it, they're just humming. Yeah, it's the propellers. And right. The but it was, all of a sudden, I'm like, what is that noise? <laughs> and then when they all landed, I'm like, the noise is gone. And it was, it was the drones. I thought it was cool. So it was very cool watching it over there. Mm -hmm. We had dinner at Summer House this weekend. We did. That was good. Mm -hmm. I had this roasted shishito pepper that was literally just like, I don't know, like 20 roasted peppers. But it was really good. Yeah. It was very good. Good. Also had that again the next night. (laughs) At Toledo. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, Ashley, I think her name was. Yes. Was outstanding, our server. Yeah, Toledo, yes. She was great. She was outstanding. Um, Summer House, gotta be honest with you, that guy was fine, but he was not great. Right. That he- annoyed me a little because we've had nothing but outstanding service at that place. And when the service was bad, it was just slow and... He was definitely interested in working as many tables as he could. Right. Rather than. Making sure everything was right at each table. Right. But the food was still very good at Summer House. Yes. Um, I don't know what you had. I had the pizza. Oh, yeah. Pepperoni. Right. Right. And I had the peppers and I had a side of mush, uh, meatballs. Mm-hmm. And Veronica had the um, egg. Artichoke. artichoke. It was a huge artichoke. artichoke. Yeah. Roasted. Mm-hmm. Open fire or whatever. And she, yeah, wood fire. She really liked it. Yeah. So Saturday night, we went to Toledo. Yes. We had the chef's signature something for two. Mm-hmm. Dinner, whatever. Right. It was delicious. It was a ribeye, two sides, a couple of like appetizers Mm -hmm. and dessert yes it was so much more food than two people could eat the steak was enormous it was gigantic delicious very good the little tapas plate they gave us was pretty cool it was like Mm -hmm. a bite of everything the dessert same thing like a bite of everything right and a charcuterie board Mm -hmm. so it was delicious yes and the uh up there is very pretty yeah the roof was the ceiling was really cool. Yeah. So highly recommend that. Um, mm-hmm. You don't have to get the meal for two, but I mean, all the entrees were 40 bucks plus. So. Right. And this was basically everything. Yeah. So, we, you know. Appetizers, dessert, all of that. Sides, everything. We still have leftovers. Yeah. So that was also very, very cool. The steak mm-hmm. was cooked perfectly per our request. Right. We had some kind of potatoes and had the, I did not eat because I'm 
not doing carbs. Right. And I had those peppers, the shiitake. And we had the shishito peppers. Shishito. It was delicious. It was. It's not something we'll do every time. No, but I really enjoyed it. And Ashley was excellent. The service was. Yeah. It'd be a good anniversary trip meal. Yeah. A little loud to be considered romantic, but if being honest, like every restaurant at Disney World is a little loud to be considered romantic. So. Yeah. I think think maybe if we hadn't been in the middle, it may not have been so loud. So anyway, um, it was a good week. It was. I think that's it. Yeah. We'll be uh, live from Saratoga again for 4th of July. Mm Mm-hmm. So Epcot on the 3rd. Nope. No. Magic Kingdom on the 3rd. uh, Epcot on the 4th. Right. On the second, we have Haleo. Yeah, the Haleo drone package deal. Yes. And on the fifth, we're doing that VIP tour thing for Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil, which I cannot wait for. I'm very excited about like that. The whole backstage thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm super excited about that. I love Cirque du Soleil. Yes. And we get to see our friend Jen. I know. I'm so excited. Right. <laughs> so, you know, no festival. I hadn't actually paid attention, I guess, that apparently they're still having bands at Epcot. Yeah, I didn't. I saw the M80s were playing the other day. I know. Wish we had known that. Yeah, we wouldn't have gone anyway, but we didn't go to a park Saturday. No, we didn't. Friday, we did like all day at Magic Kingdom and then didn't go to a park. We did play Putt Putt. That was fun. Yes. I like the winter, winter, summerland, winter course. Yeah, it was fun. It was really cute. The theming on it was really neat. Yeah, it was. So we'll go back and do the summer one. Yep. That's going to do it for episode 200. 200 in the books. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool number. Yeah. So it's been fun. Thanks to everyone who supports us. Yes. Thank you very much. By listening and whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. We're available all the podcast places uh, and YouTube. So, like, YouTube podcast. Like, I mean, we have a YouTube channel, but there's too much social media, and we have, like, jobs. So, <laughs> you just can't be on everything. No. You know? We're on all those. Uh, Facebook, Mickey File Improvement District, TikTok, and Instagram. We're on uh we are Mickey File underscore podcast. That's the little like underline thing, not the word underscore. If you're so inclined, uh, five star reviews are supposed to help people find us. So um, that would be cool if someone wanted to do that. Yes. And our email address, uh, Mickey File Podcast at gmail.com. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.